We are looking at the Grade 12 RT Paper 1, the PRAC exam from November 2018, and we are busy with the next part of question 1. Okay, we are going to do question 1.3, and in this program, we need a factor, we're going to deal with factors and prime numbers. So we're going to declare suitable variables, we're going to clear this rich edit component. And we must generate a random number from 5 to 50, inclusive, so it must be, include the number 5 to 50, and determine and display the factors of that particular number. And if the number is a prime number, then we must display it. So just so we know, a factor is a number that can divide into it, but there's no remainder. And a prime number, we know that prime numbers only have two factors, one and itself. So yeah, they give us an example. So if you have a 6, the factors of 6 are 1, 2, 3, 6. That isn't a prime number because it's got more than two factors, where 13 only has factors 1 and 13, which so therefore it is a prime number. Okay, so we've got an idea what we must do. So let's go to the program here. We've got the code. There's our rich edit control. We're going to double click on the button. Okay, first thing we're going to do is clear that rich edit. And we're going to have to get some variables. So the first thing we're going to need to do is we need to get a random number. Um, it's going to be an integer. So I'm just going to call our num of type integer. So let's generate this random number. Our num. Now we need to generate a random number from 1 to 5. Now there is a function called random range. And that takes in a now if random range doesn't work just so that you know it's because you need to have math and math looks like it's already been included so we don't need to worry about including it but if it doesn't work if you see red lines under it it's because there isn't a math at the top now random range works as you saw from far the the bottom range to the top range okay now some people go 50 so from 5 to 50, but it doesn't actually include this number. It goes to 1 before that number. So we actually should make it 51. Okay, so that's how we would use random range. If you don't want to use random range, um, you could use the random function. And you we are generating uh, 45 random numbers technically. That would generate a random number from 0 to 44. 0 to 44, so we would just plus 5 onto that. So that would generate, 0 would then become a 5, and 44 would become a 49. So we would probably have to make this 46. So when we add 5, or 45 to it, sorry. So when we add 46, so it goes 0, there we go. So then it goes from 0 to 45. So the 0 will become a 5, and the 45 will become a 50. So you can use this the normal random function. Either one's correct. Okay, so now we've got our random number. Now, if we are looking at the number 6, we are looking at all the numbers from 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, six, all the numbers from 1 to itself. So we're using a for loop. So we're going to have an r variable that's going to go from 1 to whatever that number is. Okay, so let's, for this case, Pretend that our num is a 6. So if our num is a 6, we want to go from 1 to 6 and check each and every one of those numbers if they are factored. Now, how do I know if it's a factor? I'm going to check. So if I'm checking if r, I'm checking if 1 is a factor of 6, if 2 is a factor of 6, if 3 is a factor of 6. So I'm always checking if r mod 1 the very first time and then if that is has no remainder, remember mod return tells you what the remainder is. If one goes into six and there's no remainder, then we must do something. Then we're going to check two, and then we're going to check three. So what variables going one, two, three, four? That is my r variable. And where do we get the six from? Well, that's the number that we're checking. So it's r num. So r num mod r equals zero. That's checking if i is a factor. Okay. If it is a factor, what must we do? Well, we must count them. So we need some sort of count variable. Uh, count, and we go, every time we find the number, we are doing two things. We are increasing our count because we are counting it. And then we must display this factor in the rich edit. So rich edit uh, dot lines dot add. We are adding i the number that's one two three four and that is an integer and this needs string so we convert it from an int 
to a string. Okay, so that's how it's working. Okay, um, let's just see if it works for now. It's obviously not finished, but let's see if we can display all the factors. So if I come to this question, it generated round number 15 and it went one, three, five. That those are the factors of 15. Obviously, your results will be different because obviously the number's been randomly generated. Okay, so that's working now. Um, we need to ask ourselves the question, okay, if we do this, how do we know if it's a prime number? Because if it's a prime number, we must have a space and then say, hey, it's a prime number. So we're going to add a question. If I count, how do I know if it's a prime number? If it only has two factors, then what am I doing? Well, then I'm going to first just put a space in, dot lines, dot add, and just add nothing. A random line, a blank line, sorry, and then we're going to add lines dot add. We're going to say the actual number, so the number i num plus is a prime number. Is that how they want it? Yes. The only problem, this is a string. This is not a string. So we, for us to make this whole thing a string, we need to convert i num from an int to a string. Okay, so let's see. Well, it's going to be very difficult to test this. Um, there's a little drawback. It's going to be very difficult to test to see if we get a prime number. Ah, our first one is a prime number. Perfect. Hmm. Have you noticed it's not displaying is a prime number? Hmm. Yeah, there's five. So that's working. But when we do get a prime number, like 11, it's not displaying this. Why is that so? Because count is obviously not equal to 2. But it found only two, it displayed only two. Why is count not equal to two? Well, when we find the very first number for it, like we find the first number, let's say what, the one, if we take 11, one is a factor, increase count, increase it, increase one onto what? What is our count starting at? Well, you must always, whenever you increase a variable, whenever you um, add on to itself, you should give that variable a default value. In this case, we're going to set our count to zero. So when it increases count the very first time, it knows what our count is and adds a one onto it. Otherwise, it doesn't know what it is and there might be some random number in it already. And so it will might never be two. So let's try it now. That's not a prime number. Ah, 29 is. One and 29. There we go. So now we know it is being displayed. So that's how we do prime numbers and factors. So that's question 1.3.